Welcome to Bard's Breathe Easy Service Training. My name is Rick Downey. Today, we're going to review the Dehumidification Control Board. Finding the right humidity balance for comfort, equipment, and agricultural heating and cooling applications. One board does it all. The 8201-113. In this presentation, we're going to look at wall mount AC and heat pumps with mechanical dehumidification. And this will cover single and two-stage applications. All barred units with mechanical dehum utilize the same control board. And the board functions the same for all. However, we need to note that due to unit wiring configurations, the sequence is slightly different for heat pumps and air conditioning units. This presentation applies to the 11 EER product line, including the WACD, WA slash LBD, the WSACD, and the WHD units. Other models may have a slightly different sequence of operation based on the unit low voltage setup. However, the boards are identical and they function the same. Refer to the specific model diagram and DHUM supplemental manual for the logic chart and information for your unit. This information is intended to give you an overview of the sequence of operation and how to troubleshoot the board. Legacy units use this same board. Some barred legacy units depended on a G output for the fan operation. The G terminal is not shown on this board chart because it is no longer used. Only terminals used on the board are shown on the logic chart. The correct fan speeds are energized with a 24 volt call for whatever mode the unit is running in. We recommend viewing the wiring diagram and logic chart for the exact sequence of operation. On some units, the G terminal is used only for fan on and that signal doesn't go through the dehum board. Dehumidification with an air conditioning unit only takes place when the unit is cooling, totally driven by temperature. When the AC shuts down, high humidity levels can remain in the space. With mechanical dehumidification, the operation is controlled by a humidistat monitoring the humidity level and not temperature, precisely controlling the humidity with no temperature limitation. Here you can see the dehum valve is energized and we are pumping from the compressor through the discharge line to the hot gas reheat coil located next to the evaporator. We leave that hot gas reheat coil and go to the condenser to finish the condensing operation before the Freon heads back to the evaporator. This is our sequence of operation for air conditioning. First, heating and cooling take precedence over dehum. With the call for dehumidification, a logic board energizes a two-way valve to route hot refrigerant gas through a reheat coil before finishing up in the condenser. The board will continue to energize the two-way valve until the humidistat ends the call for dehumidification or until a heating or cooling call is received. Here you can see that cooling takes precedence over dehumidification. You can see that the Y is energized even with the D energized and the occupancy energized. Cooling takes precedence over dehumidification. The D input is not received on the board because an isolation relay is energized by BW1 from the terminal strip, giving heating the preference. You can see on the left, energized on the terminal strip, BW1 and D. If you follow that across, you'll see that D doesn't show up on the input to the board, even though it's energized on the terminal strip because BW1 energized the relay and blocked that input. Down below, you can see the similar operation with BW1 energized. Even though it's calling and it's occupied, there is no D. The next thing we need to keep in mind is that the board has a jumper to choose from any time DHUM or occupied DHUM. The factory default is P1-P2, 
and that is any time. With the jumper in the P2, P3 position, dehumidification only takes place with an occupied signal. That means we have to have 24 volts to the A1 terminal while the D is energized. Let's take a look at the control board and see what these signals look like there. First, we're looking at a cooling signal. You can tell by the red dot, cooling is energized and the Y on the board is highlighted. So here is my input, YO is my output. The way that this functions, I always have 24 volts to the board through the R terminal. I have 24 volts waiting on one side of the relay. My Y signal comes in, energizes the relay, and that 24 volts goes out through the YO to bring the cooling on. It's that simple. It's all about inputs and outputs. I have a DHUM input. I didn't highlight this because it's not acting on it when the Y is energized, Y takes precedence. You can see here, the DHUM input is actually in play. I didn't, I didn't highlight this because it's, it's overridden by the Y input. That's why I have a black mark here and a red mark here. The red indicates cooling is active and I have cooling output. So I'm in air conditioning mode. Let's look at heating once. When I have a heating input, my BW1 is energized on the terminal strip, giving heating preference because when I energize BW1 on the terminal strip, it gives me output to W2, but it also energizes a relay which blocks the DHUM input. So this DHUM input isn't highlighted. It, there's no input, no voltage on D. That really isn't a function of the board. That's a function of internal wiring on the air conditioner. For dehumidification, when I have an input on D on the DHUM board, the correct relays will close and give me outputs on YO, which is my cooling, goes to my compressor contactor and TWV, the two-way valve, to route the gas through the hot gas reheat coil next to the evaporator. My jumper location will determine when I'm allowed to use dehumidification. It comes in default in the P1, P2, which is anytime dehumidification. So anytime I get a call for D, if I'm not calling for heating or cooling, I will go into dehumidification. If I select the P2, P3, in order to go into dehumidification, I have to have an A1 or occupied signal with the D. That means I could set a thermostat up to show occupancy for eight hours a day for a classroom or an office. And whenever that's occupied and I get the call, I will go into dehumidification. Even though I'm in occupied cooling and I have an occupancy input and a DHUM input, I have a cooling call and the cooling call takes precedence. It drops the DHUM and sends my signal out to the compressor contactor to run in air conditioning mode. Here we're looking at a heat pump and you can see we've added a reversing valve and some piping into the mix, but this still functions the same way for a heat pump as it does for an air conditioner. When I enter into dehumidification, my path is from the compressor out through the discharge line up to the hot gas reheat coil and then back to the condenser to finish my condensing process before it heads off to recirculate through the evaporator. Let's look at the heat pump with the dehumidification sequence of operation. Cooling takes precedence over dehumidification. A heating call takes precedence over dehum unless there's an occupied signal, and that could be with the jumper in either position. When an occupied signal is present, DHUM takes precedence over first stage heating. A second stage heating signal cancels DHUM and brings on heating, even if occupied. With a call for dehumidification, a logic board energizes the two-way valve to route refrigerant gas through the reheat coil before finishing at the condenser. That's the same sequence for the refrigeration cycle as the air conditioning. The board will continue to energize the two-way valve until a call for dehumidification ends or a second stage heating 
or a cooling call is received. This is what the logic board looks like for the heat pump. Very similar to the air conditioner with the first stage heating being the change. So cooling takes precedence over DHUM. You can see here, whenever we energize the Y, we're getting cooling. Whether the D is energized or not, the two-way valve never comes into play because air conditioning takes precedence. With an occupied signal for either jumper position, dehumidification takes precedence over first stage heating. So we have the first stage heat pump called for, but DHUM takes precedence, and you can see the two-way valve is energized rather than the reversing valve. A second stage heating call drops that out. Whenever we energize W2, it takes precedent and drops out the two-way valve and energizes the reversing valve. So you can see on the chart what my inputs and outputs look like. We'll get to the board diagram in just a moment. And the last note is we have the board has a jumper to choose from any time dehumed to occupied, the same as the air conditioner. This is the exact same board. With the jumper in the P2, P3 position, DHUM will only take place with a signal on A1 and D. So we need to show it occupied and a call for dehumidification. Let's take a look at the boards. On the cooling call, cooling takes precedence over DHUM. Even if D is energized, cooling takes precedence. We have a, a Y input for cooling, so we have a Y output. Heating takes precedence over DHUM, even if energized simultaneously, unless there's an occupied input. Here I'm showing you that I don't have an occupied input. Heating is taking precedence over DHUM, even though it's energized, it's not acting. It's overridden internally because my first stage heat input goes to B. My B signal is telling this board that it's a heat pump. With an occupied signal, for either jumper position, dehumidification takes precedence over first stage heating. For an application requiring the DHUM preference and any time DHUM, place a jumper between A1 and D. Dehumidification would take precedence over first stage heating and be available any time. Second stage heating takes priority. So a call to W2 on the board drops the D input at the board level. Even though we have 24 volts to D and 24 volts to occupancy on A1, the relays are going to switch position and drop the two-way valve. And with W1 and W2, we're running both stages of heat to catch up. Anytime DHUM, the board has the jumper to choose from anytime or occupied. The default is in P1, P2 for anytime. With that jumper in the P2, P3, we have to have an occupancy signal in order for dehumidification to take place. Remember, when you're diagnosing a problem and checking the board, there's no magic happening in this board, only inputs and outputs. In the example below, if the DHUM input is there, the two-way valve and cooling output need to be there as well. If not, a board problem is indicated. And we also have to make sure that we follow the jumper position and keep track if it's supposed to be there or not based on full-time DHUM or occupied DHUM. Use the chart for your unit and check inputs and output to verify the functionality of your board. For more installation or service material, visit BARD's website and download your unit information. Because we strive for continuous improvement, our specs and manual can change from time to time. Always grab the latest version of the manual for your equipment off from our website under the Technical Data tab. Also, visit Barb's training website. Under the technical data, click on training registration link and that'll take you to the Barb training website and you can cruise through there and see what training is available. On the front lower right corner of our home page, you can access the video library and there is a number of videos there to help you with training on the Barb equipment. BARD distributors all have qualified and capable technical service departments. 
please contact your local distributor for any technical issues first. If you're unable to reach them or resolve your technical issues, you can call Bard's Technical Service at 1-419-636-0439, 8 to 5, Monday through Friday, Eastern Standard Time. For training questions or information, please contact me, rick.downey at bardhvac.com. Thank you for choosing Bard.